Millie and Christine were born into slavery in Columbus County, North Carolina on July 11, 1851. Daughters of Jacob and Monomia McCoy, slaves owned by local farmer Jabez McKay. The McKay farm was near the town of Whiteville. Prior to the sister's birth, their mother had borne seven other children, five boys and two girls, all of ordinary size and form. The twins were conjoined at the lower spine and stood at an approximate 90 degree angle to each other. Born at a combined weight of 17 pounds, each sister had two arms and two legs of their own. Nevertheless, they referred to themselves as a singular person, Millie Christine, as did close members of their family. McKay, who was concerned whether the twin sisters would be productive and frustrated when visitors flooded his farm to view their unusual anatomy, eventually sold Millie and Christine for $1,000 to a showman interested in exhibiting them. Millie and Christine ended up in the possession of Joseph Pearson Smith, who hired them out to various road shows. As toddlers, they were clumsy and fell down quite frequently. They eventually developed a sideways walk that turned into a crowd-pleasing dance style. They were first exhibited at North Carolina's first state fair, held in 1853. They were constantly being called freaks of nature. The twins were kidnapped and taken to England by one of the men responsible for exhibiting them. Millie and Christine were handled by several managers before being reclaimed by Smith in Britain in 1857. Smith, with their mother, sued to regain custody. He won this suit and the twins returned to North Carolina. On January 1, 1863, the Emancipation Proclamation ended their slave status and they were no longer anyone's property. Before their emancipation, the girls had been showcased in fairs and freak shows in several U.S. cities and even Montreal, Canada. The twins were provided with an education and could speak five different languages, dance, play music, and sing. They were able to master keyboard duets with one soprano and one alto voice and learn to harmonize. During their time in Britain, they met Queen Victoria. For the rest of the century, the twins enjoyed a successful career as the two-headed nightingale and appeared with P.T. Barnum's famed American Museum in New York City. In 1869, a biography on the twins titled History and Medical Description of the Two-Headed Girl was sold during their public appearances. In a memoir written by the girls at the age of 17, the twins' motto was, As God decreed, we agreed, and they strove to turn impediments into assets. After 30 years of performing all over the world, Millie and Christine retired to the plantation they were born at after inheriting it from their father, who had purchased the property sometime earlier from Jabez McKay. Millie and Christine continued to be active in charity work for black schools and churches in the American South. On October 8, 1912, Millie and Christine died at the age of 61 of tuberculosis. Christine died 12 hours after her sister. They were buried in unmarked graves, but in 1969, they were moved to a cemetery in Whiteville. An undated and unsigned biography of the sisters was written around 1905. It includes events from their childhood, their kidnapping, and movement to England and finally their return to the United States and a bit of their life afterwards. At the end of the work, the girls answer the question as to whether they are one person or two, saying, although we speak of ourselves in the plural, we feel as but one person. In fact, as such, we have ever been regarded, although we bear the names Millie and Christine. This is the story of Millie and Christine McCoy.